Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and this is Guitar Revelations for Water Bay. And in this third episode, we're going to be taking a look at harmonic tapping and some other right hand oddities. Let's dive right in. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at um, two techniques, which I guess you could say are kind of distantly related, maybe second cousins twice removed or something. And they both involve uh, the use of your other hand. In my case, it's going to be my right hand, obviously left hand if you are left handed, basically the hand that is not on the fretboard. Now, this is kind of two techniques that I don't use all that often, to be honest, but invariably when I do, they get kind of a little bit of... Uh, intrigue around them asking what they are and how I can do them now again this is stuff that I've kind of stolen from elsewhere the first I guess probably the best way of calling it is going to be a harmonic tap uh, sounds a little bit like this now this is something that I've undoubtedly I think picked up off Eric Johnson Eric Johnson tends to use it more generally speaking in a kind of chordal context in that you'll get him tapping out the kind of notes of chords Will be a slightly better than that. Um, but basically, it's a technique which just employs a little bit of deafness of the right hand and not much else, to be honest. So the technique behind it is you're going to be looking for the octave, i.e. 12 notes above your original note. So take out the fact that I was bending for that first note. I was going to be on my fifth fret of my B string. So you're going to be looking for 12 frets directly above that, i.e. your 17th. Now, you can actually be looking for the 17th fret itself, not the kind of space in between the frets, literally the fret wire. And you'll be looking to tap on that, on obviously the string that you're kind of holding down further down the fretboard, as deftly as possible. It's one of those techniques that, as I said, does benefit from being a little bit sort of subtle with it. Very rarely will you really kind of hammer on and, you know, with as much kind of brute force as you can muster and actually catch it cleanly. You're far more likely to get a kind of clean effect on this if you can just very deftly, very lightly tap it. And again, as that proved, the closer to the fret you can be to being bang on top of it, the stronger the effect is going to be. Now, of course, on the intro clip, um, on the little video I just put at the start of this video, the second, I think it's actually even the first note, um, has a tapped harmonic at the end. Of course, I bent up to that note, so I was bending from my fifth fret on the B string. Again, the bend is irrelevant. As I said, you're still looking for the 17th fret because the fifth fret is where the bend started from. So the fact that you're actually hitting your kind of seventh fret doesn't really kind of come into the equation. So we're still going to be looking to tap that harmonic on your 17th fret. Again, if you kind of slowly fall off the note like I did and maybe cut it off then, gives it that really kind of cool whale call sort of sound, you know, that's quite unique. Um, as I said, this is not a technique I use all that often, to be honest. It was actually in a clip at the start of Guitar Revelations 1, if you want to go check that out. I can't remember what the note was, but again, it was a tapped harmonic. But it's one of those ones that whenever I do it, does kind of uh, raise a few eyebrows and get a little bit of intrigue going. So I just wanted to explain some of the thought process behind it. Um, the other technique that, as I said, is kind of related, I guess, in a vague way, is again, tapping with my right hand. But this time you're actually fretting the notes as opposed to just looking for the harmonic. If you go to about halfway through the intro clip, you'll hear this lick. Now, the interesting thing about this is I'm far from the kind of best guy in the world to be telling you about tapping. I don't really know anything about it. I got to a very kind of distinct crossroads in my uh, sort of development as a player where I heard eruption, um, simultaneously hearing maybe bell bottom blues and... Um, Bell Bottom Blues just sounded like it had less notes, to be honest. So as much as I have an immense amount of respect for Van Halen, I think arguably probably the most uh, influential player since Hendrix. It's not my kind of thing. I'm not very good at it at all. But somehow I've ended up with this kind of odd little tapping thing kind of creeping into my play and every now and then. So as I said, the only kind of thing really worth mentioning about it is the fact that you actually kind of falter on the bends very slightly with your left hand. It's not a case of holding the bend and then tapping. <laughs> so much as you're coming down very slightly off the bends in between the taps. And again, that's kind of all there is to it, to be honest. The, the bulk of that, or the kind of crux of it, is really in the fact that you very slightly falter on the bends, as I said, where you get that kind of... kind of slight sigh or anything going on, obviously then punctuated by the taps. 
gives it a slightly kind of unique sort of uh, strange sound, I guess, ultimately. But um, as I said, far from the kind of uh, most usual guy in the world to be doing these techniques, but it kind of does creep into my playing every now and then. And I thought it would be cool to uh, try and expand upon. So as ever, thank you very much. Cheers, guys. <laughs>